In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up an animated player character in CryEngine. If you don't have a character created of your own, that's no problem. You can use the free animated deer model that we provide. You can download that using the link in the description below. This tutorial is not exactly for beginners. It assumes that you already have CryEngine installed and that you're pretty comfortable navigating the sandbox editor. If you are brand new to CryEngine, I suggest that you at least watch the introduction tutorial, which is the first video in our Flappy Boy Beginners course. You can find it right here in our YouTube channel or in the link that I'll provide below. So let's get right to it. There are several ways to set up an animated character player, but regardless of the method, the first concept that you have to understand is that the file name and path of the player character are written into the CryEngine sandbox code. So your options are either to edit that one line of code, which may sound scary if you're an artist, but actually doesn't require any technical knowledge about programming, or you can simply give your player character the same name and path as that the one the engine is expecting. I should also mention that Microsoft provides a community version of Visual Studio that's full featured and absolutely free, so you don't have to spend a dime on it in order to be able to see and edit the code. If you do want to try editing the code but don't have Visual Studio installed or have never used it, pause here and watch our short, easy videos on how to install Visual Studio and create a CryEngine project. Again, you'll find links to these below. So let's get to it. The first thing is you're going to need to have created a character with some associated animations and export it in FBX format. I do want to clarify one key point here. The FBX importer is provided to give you a way to get models into CryEngine from programs other than Max or Maya. Using Max or Maya with our free plugins definitely provides significant advantages and a smooth workflow. But if you're using another digital content creation tool for which we don't offer a plugin, then FBX may be your only way of getting your models into the engine. Bottom line, if you have Max or Maya, use those. The next thing is we need to copy that FBX file to the correct folder for your project. But first, we need to create that new project. We want to open up the CryEngine Launcher. I'm going to choose C++, and then I need to select any template that includes a player character that we can modify. I've highlighted the templates that meet that criteria. I'm going to use the third-person shooter template in this case. I'll call it 3P Demo. Then I want to click on the gear and reveal the project folder in the Explorer. What I'm interested in is the Assets folder, Objects, Characters, and then I need to create a folder for the character that I'm going to create. Since I'm using a deer model, I'm going to go ahead and create a folder called deer. Now I need to find my FBX file, which I have here in a different window, and I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste it into the folder that I created. I'm going to want to keep that open because I'm going to end up dragging it into my CryEngine project. I'll go back to the launcher, click on here, and wait for the sandbox editor to start up. So I've got CryEngine launched. I don't need to open a level to do this. All I need to do is go to the Tools menu, Animation, and open the Character tool. It's a big tool that does a lot of things, so we're going to want to maximize it so we have plenty of space to work with. Now, if you look under Characters, Objects, Characters, Sample Character, you'll see the built-in character that's already provided. So I've got the Characters folder selected. I'm going to go back here to the Project folder where I have the Deer FBX. I need to make sure this window is unmaximized because all I want to do is drag my FBX model into the Character tool to import it. You're going to see a bunch of things happen, and what's really interesting to note is all of these files that suddenly appear in that Deer folder that I made. The character definition file has been created, the animations have been imported, etc. And so I'm going to come back to my character tool, and now I have a new folder called Deer, and I'm going to double click on that, and there is our Deer model. If we come down here to Skeletons and open the Animations folder, you'll see that we have one long animation that actually contains the three animations that we're going to set up. Right now we're watching a very long idle animation, it's about 16 seconds long, and in a second here it's going to jump to the walk. And in another second, it's going to jump to the run, and now we're back to the beginning again. At any point, you can click on this timeline, which is set up in seconds, and stop the animation. I'm going to leave looping on, but I'm going to change my units to frames. Because I have all three animations in one, 
I'm going to need to split them off separately, and it'll be useful to see the exact frame where we change from one animation to the other. You may have created separate animations for your FBX. Another thing that's useful to do is to go up here to the display options, and you can see some useful information. For instance, you might want to open up Skeleton and take a look at your joints, make sure that those look the way you expect them to look. You can also see the joint names. By default, this text is pretty small, so you might want to drag or change this number to a larger number so you can actually read those joint names. I wouldn't suggest that you leave this on when you're working on the model because it gets pretty messy, but it's useful to see this stuff. It's important to understand that your physics proxies do need to be created outside of the engine in Max Maya or whatever tool you use to create your model. The proxy tools here in the character tool are for editing specific attachment types and ragdolls, for example, when the character dies and should collapse. For now, I'm going to go ahead and close my display options. Now we need to go ahead and close the engine. Remember that we haven't had any level open, so we don't have to worry about saving any particular level. We've been defining the character definition file. Next, we need to tell the engine to use the new character definition file that we've created. So I'm going to go back to the folder where I created my project. I'm going to open up Assets, Animations, Mannequin, Preview, and then you're going to see a file called player.xml. Open that up in any plain text editor. And if you look here, you'll see that we have entries for first person and third person models. And right now they're using the sample character, first person CDF and third person CDF. So all we need to do is replace that with the path and the CDF file that we just finished creating. So in my case, that's deer and deer.cdf. And just to reiterate, we haven't provided a first person headless version of our deer model, but that's okay. Go ahead and save this file and close it. Next, we need to go back to our assets folder one more time, go to animations, and open up a file called skeletonlist.xml. We're going to need a line that refers to our particular CHR file. Your .chr file is your skeleton file. I'm not going to edit the one that already exists. I'm, instead, I'm going to select it, copy it, and paste it to a new line. And then I'm going to replace this with the reference to my folder and my CHR file. Save your file and close it. Now we need to restart the engine. So go ahead and open your project again. If you have your own FBX model and your own animations already prepared, this next part may not be relevant to you. But if you're following along with our deer model, we need to separate these three animations. So if we come down here and scrub through this animation, you will eventually see that the last frame of the idle animation is 616. You'll see that there's a jump when we go to frame 617 because that's the first frame of the walk loop. That goes on until frame 647, and then 648 is the first frame of our run loop. We're not going to use frame 0, we're only going to use frame 1 through 666. So it doesn't matter the order in which I do these, I'm going to go ahead and start with the walk animation. We're going to go to File, Import FBX Animation. Remember, click on this magic little button here to import, and double click on your FBX, or click once and say Open. If that model doesn't appear immediately, try resizing the window, by the way. So what I'm going to do is change the name of this to idle. I'm going to make the start frame 1 and the last frame 616, because that's actually where this animation ends. If I click on preview this and wait patiently for 16 seconds, I should see this thing loop seamlessly, because the artist set it up that way so that the last frame and the first frame of the animation are seamless. What I want to do next is go ahead and add another animation, also based on this take one animation. And this one, I'm just going to name walk. You can call it whatever you like. This one is going to start at frame 617, and it happens to end at frame 647. So once I click on preview, if I did my job right, I should have a seamless loop here. And you see that it looks good. By the way, you can use your standard WASD keys and the same mouse shortcuts that you use in the Sandbox Editor to look at this from different angles. And there's also a run animation if you wanted to use that. You can go ahead and extract it by adding a third here. I'm going to call this run. This starts at frame 648, 
and ends at frame 666. Click on preview this and you should see a seamless running loop. I'm going to go ahead and save all this. Make sure my deer folder is selected. Click on select and I'm done with the import animation tool. So let's see what we have here. We're going to go to the file menu in the sandbox and open up the example level that's provided. Looks like this. And if you go into game with control G, you'll see that we're not seeing our deer or whatever character you imported. We're still seeing this default character. So at this point, we need to go in and edit the C++ code and point it to the new character that we created. So let's go ahead and quit the engine. And what we need to do is go back to our project, right click on our cry project file, and we need to generate a solution. In order to do this, of course, you'll need to have Visual Studio already installed. So here are the versions that I have in my case. Of course, I want to work with the 64-bit version. Give this some time to run. And now, if you look here, you'll see that we have a new folder called Solutions. And if we open that up and drill down into Win64, we're going to see a file called game.sln. That is our parent solution file that contains all of the projects, all of the components that form this project. So I'm going to go ahead and double-click this to open it in Visual Studio. So the first thing that I would suggest that you do is just prepare for when we build later on. We're going to want to choose a configuration method. Unless you're doing serious debugging, by default, I recommend that you work in profile. That's how our engine is shipped. The drawback with using debug is a severe performance penalty. For more information about this, watch our video on setting up a C++ project. If we go over here to the Solution Explorer, what we're interested in is under Game, Components, and what we want is the player CPP file. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. There's not a ton of code in here. There are 334 lines, and the only line that I care about is going to be somewhere around here. We're looking for that same reference to the sample character. And of course, we want to do the same thing we've been doing. We want to change it to our character. So in this case, I have a folder called deer, and the CDF file that I made is called deer. And that is literally all we have to do for this. The next step is to build. So I'm going to go to the build menu, choose build solution. You'll see this stuff happening in the output window down here. You're going to see more than I just saw because I had already done that step. And now we're ready to actually launch the project in the sandbox editor. And I'm going to go ahead and open the example level. I'm going to go to full screen view in my case, start the game mode, and there is our deer. And while it moves around, it can even bump into things, except uh, the proxy is kind of funny right now. You'll notice that the animations haven't been assigned yet. So our last step is to use a tool called the Mannequin Editor. And the Mannequin Editor's purpose is to assemble animations together, to blend them, which means to handle transitions from one to the other, and also to layer them. So for instance, I could have an animation that is affecting the whole body. A character may be running, but at the same time, you may want to add an animation that affects part of the body to load a weapon or to toss something with their hand, that sort of thing. This animation stuff is a huge complex topic, so the Mannequin Editor is one of our more complicated tools. So we're just going to learn the very basics of assigning the animations that came from your FBX file to specific events. There'll be subsequent tutorials that will go much deeper into this tool. However, there is quite a bit of information and tutorials on the docs already, so I would suggest that you start with this page in the documentation. This page is a great leaping off point. It gives a high level overview of the tool, and it also links to a more technical explanation of the concepts behind Mannequin and provides a series of tutorials. So this is not something you're going to learn in a day or a week, but today we'll at least get up and running. So I'm going to go to the Tools menu, Animation, Mannequin Editor. It's a big tool, so let's give it all the space we can. And the first thing we're going to do is go to the File menu and say Load Preview Setup. We want to browse to Animations, Mannequin, Preview, and then the Player.xml file that we had edited earlier. And what you're going to see here right away is a bunch of animations that have nothing to do with our deer or your player necessarily. These are an example of the kind of things that you use Mannequin for. Blending between animations, layering them, stuff like that. 
you'll see a reference to B space, which is blend space, layers, lots of things that we're not going to use. What we're interested in is over here. The default idle animation is what we need to assign here. So I'm going to double click this. We can see our deer here. What we need to do is replace this animation file right here with our idle animation. So I'm going to click on this box, click on the browse button, and come here to my idle animation. If I go ahead and click between these, I should see my timeline expand to the full length of this animation. So I'm going to do the same thing for the third person view. I'm going to click on this animation here and again replace the animation with my idle. And now when I go through, click on here and press the space bar to play or use this button down here, I should see the idle animation that we'd already extracted. I'm going to do the same thing for walk. Come down here, open the walk folder, double click on this, click here, click over here on the animation field, and select my walk animation. Do the same thing for third person view. Click on the browse button, select walk. And now we see our walk loop. Our loop button is right here if you want to turn that on and confirm that the walk is working seamlessly. Our last step is simply to save. So we're going to go to the file menu and choose save changes, click on save, and we're done. Now we have our idle animation and we have our walk animation. Now you remember that we also extracted the run animation that we included with our FBX file, but even if we set up that animation, we don't have any code in the default template that we're using here to actually trigger it. So that's beyond the scope of this particular tutorial, but that is all you need to do in order to get your things up and running. So now if we go back and test this, you can see we can walk with the W key. If I let go, the idle animation immediately starts and you can watch it unfold and loop every 16 seconds. What you don't see is some kind of blending. So for instance, if I rotate the camera, it's actually spinning my character around, which doesn't look natural or make sense because there's no turn animation. There's no blending from an idle position to turning to stopping. Or if I go between walking and idling, there's no sort of smooth start and stop. So we'll address those topics in subsequent tutorials, but that completes our tutorial on setting up a basic animated character in CryEngine.